Wives of the prophets in Islam 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 الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله صلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers of Madani Channel Welcome once again in another episode of ours of of a program that goes by the name of wives of the prophets inshallah zawajal today we'll be talking about the wives of the prophet nuh alayhi salam sayyidina nuh alayhi salam um, according to narrations he had two wives we'll be talking about them inshallah zawajal but before that as usual let us first of all listen to a virtue of sending peace and salutations upon the noble prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam the holy prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has stated that he who sends salawat upon me he who sends salat upon me once allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shawas 10 mercies upon him sallu ala al habib sallallahu ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam now dear was madani channel when we talk about having any kind of association with any of the chosen servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is of immense honor. And especially when someone has the honor of being married to a prophet, then we can imagine what great, great ranks and honors they would possess. However, what we should understand over here is, and be mindful of is, that to attain this honor and to attain the blessings of the hereafter, by having this honor, by being a wife of a prophet, the condition is to have faith. To be amongst those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be a Muslim. And now, he who is not a Muslim, even if she is a wife of a prophet, or no matter how closely related he or she is to a prophet or any other chosen servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that association will not help that person at all. And that person will be subject to severe punishment in the hereafter because Iman, faith, is the essence of everything. That is the base, the foundational ground of every honor, of every privilege, of every blessing that you can attain. We're talking about the wife of Sayyiduna Nuh salam, and her name was Wahila. Wahila. That was the name of this unfortunate woman. Now, Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, he was amongst Anbiya Ulul Azm, the most distinguishedly elite prophets in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam is amongst them. And she had the honor, the rank of being wife of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. You can imagine what a great honor that would be if she wanted. She could serve Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. She could embrace faith upon him, upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and attain the blessings of this world and the afterlife. Be successful in this world as well as in the afterlife. But unfortunately, she was not even regardful of the fact of being associated with Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. And unfortunately, she joined up, teamed up with the disbelievers of the nation of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam and she assisted them in harming Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam Allah. she played a big role in harming Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu salam and one of the ways through which she would harm Nuh alayhi salam is by having a propaganda against Nuh alayhi salam and she would call Nuh alayhi salam Allah to be insane this is what she would call Nuh alayhi salam astaghfirullah and she would disrespect Nuh alayhi salam. Of course, calling someone insane is disrespecting him. And imagine calling this to a, a prophet of Allah. Astaghfirullah. What great insolence and disrespect this is. Now, she would spread a false propaganda 
against Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam within uh, the society and she would call him to be insane. And um, once she asked Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam that is your Lord going to help you? And Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam replied that yes, my Lord will help me. And she asked, when is he going to help you? And then Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, he replied that when the clay oven, the water will start gushing forth from the clay oven. Now, listening to this, she straight away went to um, her nation, to the people of her nation, and she said to them that Nuh has become insane. Ma'adullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfir. This is what she said. And then she carried on to say that he thinks that his Lord will help him when water starts gushing forth from the clay oven. So in a mocking way, she started to mention this to the disbelievers of the nation of Nuh alayhi salam. And this is how she was making fun of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. Now, the viewers of Madani channel, this unfortunate and accursed woman, Wahila, she would harm Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu was salam and utter sentences of disrespect for Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. And she didn't even pay any regard to the association that she had with Nuh alayhi salam for being the wife of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. And she wasn't blessed with embracing faith. And eventually she died upon disbelief and became deserving of eternal punishment of hellfire. Just imagine, imagine how severe destruction she faced. And why did she face this? This is the question that we need to ask ourselves. It's because of disrespecting a prophet of Allah. Because of having enmity, having grudges against the prophet of Allah. And she would spread a false propaganda against Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. And all these actions, along with when she used to call him insane, ma'azallah, all these actions, they served together towards her destruction and towards, her, um, towards making her deserving of the punishment of the hellfire forever. And what happened was when the flood of Nuh alayhi salam, when the flood came in that time, then all the believers were saved. But Bahila, she, along with the rest of her nation, they all were drowned. They all were destroyed. This is how this unfortunate woman, she met her doom. She met her end. Regarding the flood, how it emerged, Sidra Nuh alayhi salam kept propagating the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 950 years. And during all these years, only a handful of people, they accepted his message and came on the right path. And then a revelation was revealed upon Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam that those people who've already embraced Islam, who've already come on the right path, other than them, no one else will now embrace Islam. No one else will now embrace faith. So now Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, he lost hope in people that they will come on the right path. And he alayhi salam then supplicated against them, supplicated for the destruction of his nation. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam to prepare an ark and through a revelation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam that a flood will emerge and your entire nation, the disbelieving people of your nation, they will drown in that flood, they will be destroyed in that flood. And what is the sign of the emerging of that uh, flood? It is that water will start gushing forth from the clay oven of your house. This is what was said to Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu So say, this is exactly what happened. That one day in the morning, water started to gush forth from the clay oven of the house of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. And now Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu salam started to board all the people, those who believed in him, those who embraced faith upon him. They started, uh, he alayhi salam, started to uh, embark all of them, board all of them on the ark. And then what happened was that there was a severe, severe, severe rain, torrential rain that, that is beyond our imagination. The springs, they started to gush forth. And for 40 days, water was poured down from the skies. And the earth also kept gushing forth water. Now what happened was that water rose even above the mountains and everything submerged into it. Everything drowned in water. And the wind was flowing so fast 
that because of it, the the waves, the waves of the water, they became so so tall as if they were mountains. This was the condition of the flood of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. And when the flood reached its peak, and the entire nation of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam was drowned in it, they were destroyed. Then Allah subhanahu wa taala commanded the earth to absorb its water, to absorb its water, and commanded the sky to stop pouring water down. After that, the entire water that started to dry down, and the nation of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam was completely destroyed, and only those remained safe who embraced faith upon Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, and they embarked upon the ark of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu salam. And it is stated that Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam stayed in the ark for six months. That ark remained in the water for six months, and after six months, it stopped on Mount Judi. That's where the uh, ark of Nuh alayhi salam stopped, and it is stated that Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam embarked upon the ark on tenth of Rajabul Murajab, and he alayhi salatu salam came out of the ark on a tenth of Muharram al Haram. These are the dates that have been mentioned in the books, and. When Nuh alayhi salam came uh, out of the ark on 10th Muharram al-Haram, that's when he also kept a fast and also commanded other people to keep a fast as well. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Madani channel, we're talking about the horrible end that the wife of Nuh alayhi salam, Vahila, faced. And reason being was because of being amongst the disbelievers, because of disrespecting the Prophet of Allah. Because of spreading a false propaganda against him, Madala uttering uh, disrespectful words for him. Because of all this, she met her doom and she was subject to the uh, severe punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the ill traits that Vahila she possessed was revealing secrets, disclosing others' secret, secrets to others. This is one of the things that Vahila she kept doing. Whenever Sayyidina Nuh salam, would receive a wahi, this unfortunate woman would tell the secrets of Sayyidina Nuh salam, to her nation, to the disbelievers of her nation. And whenever any fortunate person would embrace Islam, would embrace Iman upon Sayyidina Nuh salam, then this unfortunate, accursed woman would go to the people of her nation and she would tell them about that fortunate person, the, the oppressors of her nation, she would go to them and she would tell them that so-and-so has embraced faith upon Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, so that, of course, they can torment the, that person, they can oppress him. So this is one of the things that Vahila had in her that was revealing secrets and secrets of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu salam. So we need to ensure that we don't have any such habits, ma'adallah which is severely condemned in Quran and Hadith. Furthermore, dear viewers of Madani channel, one son of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, whose name was Kinaan, he was born from Vahila as well. He was a hypocrite. And what he used to do was that he would pretend to be a Muslim, but he would hide his disbelief. And when the flood of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam emerged, when that flood came, then the hidden hypocrisy and disbelief of Kinaan also uh, became apparent in front of everyone. And um, when Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, he had formed the ark, he had built the ark, and he had made people board the ark. But when the flood came, then Kinaan, he did not board the ark, he did not come in the ark. In fact, he stayed outside the ark by one side. And Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, he said to him that, Oh my son, come and embark the ark, board upon the ark, uh, so that you're not amongst those people who are deprived of Allah's mercy because of not uh, um, boarding the ark. And to this, Kinaan, rather than um, boarding the ark, he replied to Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, that I'll seek refuge in one of the mountains. You don't worry about me. That will save me. This is what he said. And then Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, he replied that today there's nothing that can save anyone from the punishment of Allah Almighty, but the one whom he saves himself. Only he can be saved from being submerged, from being drowned. Then a wave came in between Sayyidina Nuh and Kinaan. He was drowned 
in that water in that flood and became amongst those unfortunate disbelievers of the nation of Sayyidina Nuh who did not accept the message of Tawheed, who did not embrace faith upon Sayyidina Nuh who did not embrace faith upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the horrific end of Wahila and her son Kinaan who did not embrace faith upon Sayyidina Nuh Now again the Hebrews of Madrid Channel, if we contemplate this entire account and see the ill habits, ill deeds that Wahila had in herself was that she would mock her husband, she would reveal her secrets outside to other people and she would not obey him. And now revealing secrets of a person to another person, how severely this has been condemned in Quran and Hadith, we can see that. And what consequences one faces by the means of not following these instructions given in Quran and Hadith. The telling secrets is severely condemned. And Wahila, she fell prey to it. And also telling secrets of that personality was a prophet. But yet, again, we need to analyze our own selves. We need to hold ourselves to account, to ask ourselves whether we also do the same. If I know a secret of yours, do I go to the other person and tell that? Do I indulge in slandering? Do I do this or not? We all know what is the state of our society today. Hardly any secrets are kept secrets. We come to know of something from one person, then straight away the news is spread all around. We tell the other person and the other person and the other person. We start disclosing the secrets of other people and eventually it ends up in being rumors and sometimes we add up things as well in it. We add up lies in it. Then imagine the severity of uh, the intensity of the sin, how greatly that would increase. Wahila, who was the wife of a prophet, she was doomed. She faced destruction because of one of this, these ill deeds. So we need to be very, very careful in regards to where we stand and where we are and what our actions are in this relation. Don't reveal other people's secrets to others. Keep them with you. If they are secrets, then keep them as secrets. Do not expose those to others. As you wouldn't like your secrets to be exposed to others, similarly respect other people's secrets as well. Otherwise, we can also face severe consequences as Vahila did in her case, where she was a wife of a prophet, but yet faced severe consequences. Dear viewers of Madani Channel, we spoke about one of the wives of Sayyidina Nuh salam, who was a disbeliever woman whose name was Vahila. Insha'Allah, we will talk about the second wife of Sayyidina Nuh salam, who was a believer, who was a Muslim, who embraced faith upon Sayyidina Nuh salam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the discussion that we carried on earlier, that being associated with a prophet would only be helpful for a person when that person has embraced faith is a Muslim when he believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet of the time that is necessary. So Vahila, the other wife of Sidra Nur salam, she didn't believe in Nur salam. She didn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she was supporter and helper of the disbeliever people of her nation who used to harm Sidra Nur salam. And she was at the forefront in harming Sidra Nur salam, in disrespecting Sidra Nur salam, in mocking making fun of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam and spreading a false propaganda against Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. So then, despite being the wife of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, she still met her doom. We talk about the fortunate wife of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam who was a believing woman who believed in Nuh alayhi salam and who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you see what great difference there is between Wahila and this very wife of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. The other one, she was destroyed. The association, affiliation with the Prophet is the same. But it all depends on the, on the beliefs of the person that makes them attain the ranks of elevation. Now this very wife was also the wife of Nuh alayhi salam. Wahila was also the wife of Nuh alayhi salam. But what is the, the distinguishing factor between both of them? It is the beliefs. How she dealt with Nuh alayhi salam and how she, this very wife is dealing with Nuh alayhi salam. And when the flood came, then she embarked upon the ark with Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu salam. And this account has also been mentioned in the Holy Quran. In the 40th verse of Surah Hud, Allah Almighty says, 
Translation from Kunzul Iman To the extent that when our command came and the clay oven gushed forth water, we said, board the ark as a pair male and female from every species and your family members and all other muslims so this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the uh, glorious quran regarding those who boarded the ark of sayyidina nu alayhi salatu wasalam and this very fortunate wife of nu alayhi salam also embarked upon the ark along with other few other fortunate people and regarding the word ahlaka in this verse it is stated in tafasir that this refers to the muslim wife of sayyidina nu alayhi salam and um, his offspring that he had from this very muslim wife because the other son kenan was from wahila and we uh, covered that what he faced but over here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned about the wife of Nuh alayhi salam and the children of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. And Sayyidina Allama Sulaiman Jamal rahmatullahi ta'ala was elaborating this further. He says that Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, he had two wives. One wife embraced faith upon him and she boarded the ark, whereas the other one, she did not uh, embrace faith upon Nuh alayhi salam and she was drowned in the flood of Nuh alayhi salam. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ala Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Regarding the name of the Muslim wife of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam According to one narration It is stated that her name was Amud So we learn that the Muslim wife The wife who embraced faith upon Nuh alayhi salam And upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Her name was Amud Now Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam He had three sons Three sons of Nuh alayhi salam who were left who also embraced faith upon Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. They were not unfortunate like Kanaan who did not embrace faith upon Nuh alayhi salam. So Ham, Sam and Yafith. They, uh, these three sons of Nuh alayhi salam, they embraced faith upon Nuh alayhi salam and they boarded the ark and they were from, they were born from the same Muslim wife of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. Now, we see over here dear viewers of Madani channel, that and it is these three sons of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam from where the human race then continued. Sam, Ham, and Yafith. These are the three sons of Nuh alayhi salam who, after the boat had stopped at Mount Judi after six months, and when everyone dismounted the ark and they started to living a life again, then it is from Sam, Ham, and Yafith that the human race then continued to grow and each race of human species they the 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 great grandfather you can say they are sam ham and yafith a certain race began from sam certain from ham certain from yafith but this was the honor given to them all that the human race started from them again because of their element of embracing of faith upon sayyidina nuh alayhi salatu wasalam and as we mentioned earlier that all the excellences, everything, they depend upon the faith of a person. How? They embrace faith upon the Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How they believe in them and how they support them. All excellences, all elevations of ranks, everything revolves around only this concept. That how strong your faith is. The stronger the faith is, the higher ranks will be. And if a person doesn't have faith, Allah, then no matter how close he is in the court of a prophet or in the court of any other chosen servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that proximity, that affiliation, that association will be of no help to him. And faith is something that if the faith of a person is strong and even if he is at a distance from someone beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, physically distance he is facing from someone who is beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but yet because of his faith because of his spirituality that distance wouldn't mean anything and his closeness his proximity 
in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be immense and the ranks and all that would obviously then be elevated depending on how strong that very individual's faith is, that very individual's iman is. Iman is the most precious asset that a moment, a believer can ever possess. There's nothing more superior than Iman. Iman is like the foundation of a building. If the foundations are strong, then you can erect a building on top of those foundations. If the foundations are weak, doesn't matter how beautiful the walls are, how beautiful the roof is, how beautiful the ceiling is, eventually it will all collapse. Why? Because foundations are not strong. So we need to make sure over here, from this very account of Wahila and the Muslim wife of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. What do we learn? That we need to work towards our faith, our iman. We need to rid the ill habits, especially those which Wahila had. Especially those. So that we don't face doom or misfortune in this world and in the hereafter. No matter how close we are to any sacred place or any sacred bondsman of Allah Almighty. If the faith is not strong, then there's nothing. And if faith is strong, then distances, even they don't matter. Ulama karam, awliya karam, they put so much emphasis on the matter of Iman. Only that person will be successful in the hereafter who departs this world with their Iman intact. This is something very, very important and sensitive for us to ponder upon. Whether we will be amongst those fortunate people who will depart this world with their Iman intact or not. At the time of our death, would our Iman stay with us? Would we succeed in departing this world with our Iman or not? This is very, very important for us. Very, very important for us. And this was the distinguishing factor between the Muslim wife of Nuh and Wahila, who was a non-believer. It was faith. So faith elevated the ranks of the Muslim wife of Nuh whereas it was lack of faith, absence of faith, which made Wahila face doom, destruction. This is how it is. This is how important Iman is. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Dear Wizard of Madani Tanu, we spoke about Wahila, the wife of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, and Sayyidina Lut alayhi salam, another prophet of Allah subhanallah. His wife was called Wa'ila. Wa'ila. And the disbelieving wife of Nuh alayhi was Wahila. We'll talk about Wa'ila, the wife of Lut alayhi salam, in our uh, next episodes, inshallah. But some uh, ulama, they've mentioned the names other ways around as well. Some say that Wahila was the wife of Nuh alayhi salam and Wa'ila was the wife of Lut alayhi salam. But some say that Wa'ila was the wife of Nuh alayhi salam and Wahila was the wife of Lut alayhi salam. However, we find both opinions, but the opinion that we have taken is Wahila is the wife of Nuh alayhi salam and Wa'ila is that of Lut alayhi salam. At the end of this episode of ours, where we are talking about the wives of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam, again, the whole purpose behind all these um, programs is to reflect upon ourselves and in the light of what we learn from, um, from the teachings of Islam where do we stand in terms of bettering ourselves, where do we stand in terms of enhancing other spirituality, where do we stand in terms of increasing our faith, where do we stand in terms of strengthening our Iman because very clearly we've determined this that without Iman, there's nothing. And why I'm emphasizing so much on Iman now? From last, I don't know, five, six minutes. We're just talking about Iman, 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 and Iman. Because that is the only thing that actually matters. Without Iman, there's no importance for anything. And Iman is something that distinguishes between those who are successful and those who are unsuccessful. As was the case with Wahila and Amud, the Muslim wife of Sayyidina. Nur alayhi salatu wasalam. So take this opportunity, dear viewers of Madani channel, take this opportunity to ponder upon your state, to see a, whether any element of those ill deeds are present in us as well that were in Wahila that we covered, where dis disrespecting the Prophet was involved, where uh, revealing secrets was involved, so and so forth. If that is the case, then we should tremble with fear. Because you see what end she faced because of those ill deeds? What if? May Allah save us. May Allah save us. May Allah save us. 
What if because of those actions, similar kind of issue, similar kind of punishment also befalls us? May Allah save us. So dear viewers of Madani Channel, be very, very careful in this regard. Be very careful um, and mindful in regards for the protection of your faith, for the strengthening of your faith, which is the base foundation of everything. Without faith, there is nothing. With faith, there is everything. Everything comes with faith. I pray to Allah Almighty that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to be amongst those who are the people of faith and those who are successful in this world and in the hereafter. Ameen. Bijahin Nabiji Lameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallallahu ala Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Wives of the prophets in Islam. Wives of the prophets in Islam. Wives of the prophets in Islam. Wives of the prophets in Islam.